Welcome to This Is My Architecture. I'm Lana from AWS, and today I'm joined by Peter from Kaleido. Hi, Peter. Welcome. Hi, Lana. Great to be here. Um, would you mind telling us a little bit more about Kaleido? So Kaleido is a platform to build decentralized applications. That's blockchain applications. It's where you can come together as an enterprise consortium and build a permissioned private network with a blockchain at its core and all of the services that you need to build the application itself. When we talk about blockchains, we usually think about a single node. So what makes this solution different? So the really interesting thing about blockchain is that it isn't a blockchain if you just have one node, if you just have one participant. Everything that you do, the technical implications are there because every transaction needs to be replicated to everybody else in the, in the consortium. And the reliability, the availability, the scale, the performance is all based on that multiple nodes, multiple participants, cross-region, cross-network, borderless blockchain. That's great. Um, so whenever our viewers are looking to build out decentralized applications or dApps, where should they get started? So I guess the first thing is to think about how different it is to what you've done before. We're all used to writing against these centralized databases mm -hmm. where you've got high throughput of transactions, you write as much data as you like. In blockchain, you need to think about the fact that you can't write huge amounts of data, or you, it doesn't make sense to write huge amounts of data, and that data can never, ever be deleted. So you can't write anything that, for example, there's a legal restriction that says you can't, can't write the data. And that data is going to take some time to propagate through the network, through the consensus algorithms. So you've got to, to worry about all of those, those concerns, or rely on a platform like Kaleido to sort of take some of those away from you. Um, so let's say I've launched uh, a decentralized application on Kaleido. Let's say it's an Ethereum application. So how would I actually interact with it? So um, what we provide inside of Kaleido is we provide a really simple interface layer. As well as the raw JSON RPC Ethereum APIs, we provide a REST interface we call EthConnect that makes it really easy to get the transactions in and data out of the blockchain. So you could take an existing application, maybe it's got an SQS queue with events going on to it with some simple JSON payloads coming out here and take something as simple, as trivial as a short Lambda function. No special libraries required, just HTTP, tiny bit of transformation to say, hey, look, I'd like to send a transaction to the blockchain. And then I can send that from my own account across a private link into the Clido, Clido network. And instead of having to go all the way directly to those low-level APIs, I can go to this interface that we call EthConnect, and I can send this simple JSON or YAML payload to EthConnect, and it will take care of the rest. Okay, that makes sense. So we're using EthConnect to uh, tackle some of the scalability issues, I'm assuming. Yes, so that's a key part of what it does, as well as just you know all that OLP encoding and stuff that you don't need to have to deal with. It it's, um, has in its core a Kafka streaming layer that's built into the Kaleido platform. And what we do is we, we split the transactions based on the nonce, which is what you have to do in an Ethereum chain. We stream them through Kafka, and then on each of those partitions inside of Kafka, we are picking the message is off, doing all of the receipt checking back through to get them onto the chain, um, and waiting for the propagation to happen through the consensus algorithm, receiving that receipt back, and then providing you a trivial REST API as well to check for the result once it's arrived. Um, and as far as identity and key management, so uh, identity is a core of blockchain. So how would I actually um, handle that as a, as, as a user? So and again, the difference here is it's not just my identities. In fact, actually, my identities I'm probably dealing with using standard IAM systems like Cognito that we, that we integrate with. Um, what really matters is everybody else's identity, because this is a private permissioned network. If you're doing an enterprise use case, most of them are on a private permissioned network like we run on Kaleido. So what I need is I need to know everybody else's identity, which means I need a registry, mm -hmm. um, an on-chain registry. Again, this is something that we provide out of the box. And then, of course, the registry is a tying between a real-world identity. And in Kaleido, we let you use a PKI identity. So that's just the standard thing that everybody okay. uses for, for a website. We allow you to pin one of those down on-chain in the registry, and that gets tied to a key. Because everything in a blockchain is based on a key. That's yep. what identity comes down to. 
Okay, and how does KMS fit into this? That's a great question. So, obviously, um, the key is your identity. You care mm -hmm. deeply about it. Collido needs access to be able to sign transactions. It needs access to be able to sign transactions to mine blocks on the chain. It needs to be able to submit transactions into the chain using, using a key. Um, but rather than just saying, hey, look, Collido, have the, have the key, persist the key, what we allow you to do is to bind a, um, a KMS system with a master key actually all the way down to the, the chain itself so that um, our, uh, we don't actually persist the key in its raw form. You have a, the um, decryption key for that, for that key in, in your own KMS system, in your account, mm -hmm. and Collido just accesses it when it needs it. And the really exciting thing in this space is that AWS has just announced support of the Ethereum curve, SecP mm -hmm. 256K1. So we're actually going to be able to move to actually sign in the transactions over here in the KMS. So we don't even need to decrypt the key into, into Collido. That's great. Um, as a lot of us say, not your keys, not your data, or not your coins. So I think that rings true to a lot of our viewers. Um, so we've covered how to interact with the Ethereum chain via Collido and handle um, identity and key management. Uh, something that uh, we see quite often is making sure that you have control of your own data. So um, how do you use CloudWatch and S3 for uh, as part of these deployments? So, so obviously operations um, matters deeply in any um, scenario, particularly when you're using a, a managed service. And uh, what we do inside of Collido is we allow you to take your own accounts, CloudWatch and S3, and be able to stream the logs from your nodes and all of the other services you're running in Collido to your own CloudWatch account, so they're sat there next to your application logs. Um, and then also provide a full backup of your node, because it is your data and, and your node, that we're, we're managing for you in Collido and have that stored back in your own S3 bucket. And I guess that's kind of some of the off-chain data scenarios, mm -hmm. but we also see that um, a lot of data that you're dealing with in a blockchain yeah. application isn't just the, the chain itself. So there's, there's, there's large amounts of data that, that don't fit on the chain. Mm -hmm. So in the supply chain um, use case scenario, you would actually store some of the data in S3 bucket, let's say, as you're ar architecting this solution? That's, um, so what we tend to find is that because you need the data to be sort of married with the chain, so mm -hmm. that the data that's off-chain is partnered with on-chain, it tends to use a, te a specialist technology. So we actually have a technology called IPFS, the Interplanetary File System, built into Collido. So, and that's cross-connected with everybody else who's inside of your network. And you can store data inside of there with a straightforward REST API. It's distributed peer-to-peer -peer, um, with all of the other participants in the network, but not stored on chain, which means it can be deleted um, and it can be much larger than the data that you might store on chain. But critically, what you tend to do is then have a hash of the data that's inside of IPFS on chain so that the transactions in those smart contracts can refer to the data, even though the data itself isn't on the chain. Uh, sounds great. Um, uh, another thing I wanted to touch on is privacy. I think uh, a lot of us used to blockchain. It's kind of take a little bit of our privacy back. So um, that's why uh, I'm very curious to see how you've approached this and how you're using services like KMS and uh, privacy extensions to achieve that. So privacy is critical in any of these enterprise scenarios, and that's what we tend to focus on. And privacy is really interesting in a blockchain scenario because the whole thing is a shared ledger. Everybody okay. can see everybody else's stuff. Well, fundamentally, that's not what an enterprise wants. You're getting together with 50 of your partners, 50 of your competitors maybe, and you're building a network. You're going to have some data you want to keep private from other participants on the chain. So we provide some of the Enterprise Ethereum Alliance standard um, privacy extensions as part of the product. We also provide um, a HD wallet to anonymize entry um, of transactions into the network. So basically, you can transact on this network with a subset of the, part of the participants, have that backed by the blockchain, but actually do private data exchange with, with participants completely anonymously on the chain. Peter, thank you so much for coming down today and telling us more on how to launch decentralized applications using Kaleido and AWS. And thank you for watching This Is My Architecture.